So, good morning everyone. Uh, a few days ago, I gave a share based upon the commentary of my great grandfather, the Orphaner, on the Agatha of Pesach. And uh, as we just also producing a new edition, I'll just make a few introductory comments. That we know that two of the great powers in Western Europe to save Orthodox Jewry, one was Rav Shamsun Paul Hirsch, whose writings have enormous impact also today on all aspects of the inner significance of the mitzvot, and also the deeper spiritual significance of the verses of the Chumash and Tehillim, <coughs> and in fact form inspiration for thousands, especially of Kiruv workers. That was some sort of wish. Apart from what he did for the community, apart from the inspiration, his teaching gave to start the Akuda, which we've described in the last few shiurim. And it's clear to me that I was brought up in a home where we had all his writings. At the same time, my great-grandfather, Old Haner, he had a yeshiva, he was the only yeshiva attended by Rav Hirsch, he came to Smicha. The other great person was Rabbi Zio Hildesheim, who founded the rabbinical seminary in Berlin. A great power in not only protecting but spreading what they call Torah true Judaism in Western Europe. And that was very much appreciated by all the Gadolim of Eastern Europe. And they were both Talmidim of the Ochner. Now, Rochner is very, very well known for his uh, detailed commentaries on some of the most difficult tractates of the Gomorrah. He is equally known for his shutim, for his responsa, Nalacha. And he's also becoming more known for his drush. So, if one analyzes his drush, he made great use of the concept that all the external mitzvot in the detail have an inner meaning, which is described in his classical work, the Choreb. And later on, in his more detailed analysis of the offerings, betamikdash, of the measurements and colors and so on, of the sanctuary, of all the different mitzvot, sitzes and tefillin, which used to call in you know, the basis of symbolism. And if we analyze it, and this example which I started with a few days ago is a good illustration, his drosh, and he even himself said, drosh is a meshib in ala drosh. You know, you can't bring proofs from the droshes of the sages to decide halakha. But he believed very much in trying to understand each mitzvah from all its laws and to see the Musa in the mitzvah. And it's shown in this. We all know in this, in this mitzvah, which we're going to deal with a little bit today, as long as there's time, which is the mitzvah of not eating and not possessing and also removing from what's the main every aspect of Chomets. So the sages already say, they use this as a, as a constant parable. They say, 
Where do we learn from that you mustn't have chomets? We even learn it from the way of baking matzahs. Because it says in the Chumash, which we're going to read on Shabbos, and which is given in the first part, addressed to all Am Yisrael, all the details where you have to do Seder night, and before Seder night, it says, You have to destroy all uh, leaven or, or, or rising bread from your possessions. This is the mitzvah of removing chomets. Since you have to remove all chomets, we will certainly have to make sure that, it says then also, Ushmatamitamatzot. You've got to look after the matzot. The sages say, Altirga matzot el mitzvot. It's the key already given. Don't read only matzot. What's the purpose of a matzot? And why do we have such a contrast between matzot, which is the mitzvah to eat, and chomets, which is, a, which is a sin for which there's even karet, if you eat it? It's the same material, except the one has in it a fermenting agent. We cause it to swell. So the sages of Shmatem eta, eta matzot. And from here we learn out that if you want to really produce the correct matzah on the high level, you've got to make sure from the time of kneading the dough that we're putting water in with the flour until the time when it's the completed baked product, there should not more than 18 minutes. Which means that you've got to use the power of the result. You've got to be quick, get on with it. Yeah? You've got to, in, in life, according to the way of the Torah, this was, this was emphasized to the people of Israel. So therefore it says, if the Shmata Meta Matzot, just like with the Matzot, you've got to use every opportunity to do good. With the Matzah, to produce it, it should be should be in time. If it's not in time, it might become chomets. If you let the dough rise, then there's already a possibility that it's got the classification of being like sa'or. And the sa'or is also used by the sages for the power of the Yitzhahara. And chomets represents the Yitzhahara, and matzah represents the mitzvot. And the first thing the people of Israel had to learn was to remove the individual and the national Yitzhahara and to go and cling to the Yitzhah Tov, which means to follow Hashem, the mitzvot. Therefore they say, Im yavo elecha mitzvah, look at the Rashi next to his passion, Chodesh. It says, if a mitzvah comes to your hand, asay otam miyad, do it immediately. Yeah. Like I'll tell you, they're, 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 I've seen it, I've seen, I, I must, I can say this, no, I won't say his name, but there's a certain person, ask him to do something, Whatever it is, even if it's not necessary, he does it immediately. It's a fantastic example of a person who fulfills this. You've got to do something straight away. You don't go and delay things. Not like me, I have to delay so many things, because I have so many things, I just can't. But I don't have the ability to do it, always. You know, people ask me, can I see you, can I see I, I can't, I've got to overthink, oh, what's my priority at this moment? There is a they're dealing for that as well. But each person has got its maximum. If, if you want to see his result, well, those who were fortunate enough to join in yesterday saw it really at one, it, 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 the result yesterday was better than I've ever seen at any hand master bakery. So, good example of result. But the same result we have, if somebody needs help, do the same result. Same thing. So, person, as much as you can, the person's got to do the results. Get on with the job, we say. In a good business also, good business will be successful, get on with the job. If you be laid back and say, oh, wait, wait. That's the way that you become impoverished. And certainly spiritually impoverished. If you want to grow in Torah and in good deeds, you've got to have the results. So the sages say it themselves. You see, the sages say there's a symbol. It's not just, and it's like this. Rav Hirsch, in his commentary, he develops this concept brilliantly. Because he says, this, if you go into the whole subject of Chomets and Matzah, now this is so important, so he, his, his main approach is, this was 
and commands were given to the nation, not just the individual. The Chatur Chodesh Hazeh speaks about Kiddush HaChodesh, how to fix the calendar, on how to celebrate the Pesach, and the Pesach communal offering. And then it says, Chometz, it represents when a person is laid back and doesn't get on with the job. Matzah means get on with it. If you want to be with the people of Hashem, you've got to be like in the army. The army, the army, they don't let you wait. We're in the army of Hashem. And Hashem says, that's why Amishul has to come up quickly from Mitzrayim. Why? Because that's the eight Sarah takes you say it like this. What was the quickness? The quickness is a bit like the Maral also goes in more deeply. He says that a person has to recognize that the quick transformation of being slaves in Egypt and then becoming the redeemed people of Hashem, to recognize it comes from Hashem through all his miracles, you see that it's not just the gradual development of a self-made nation, which is how most nations will describe their origin. We made ourselves. No, it says, Kondo Torah, you didn't make yourself, I made you. The essence of the Seder night is to know Am Yisrael was made into a nation by Hashem. We weren't really fit for it, but Hashem pulled us right up. And therefore he told us, do it in a hurry. Because if you, if you stay a bit longer, then you'll go back to the Egyptian outlook upon life. In fact, some of them couldn't get rid of it entirely. And you get rid, you, you might even get back to the physical enslavement as a result. So you've got to get on with it. And since today we're in that situation, we know the, the Torah community today, we have to get on with it and not be laid back and say, well, Hashem will help. No. In fact, in the, in the terrible suffering that will come from Amisra, as it's described by the sages, it ends with, the only one we can rely upon is Hashem. So, Chaim Volozhin. It comes from the Chaim Volozhin state in Kuba, the Linda Gong. He said, this is part of the curse. If we say Hashem will take care of everything, oh no, we've got to do it. We've got to do our part. And we're not doing enough. Today, it's quite, it's, it can be proven even that if we would have enough people today in the Toyota community who would really dedicate their lives to Kirov, we could bring all, all Amisro to Teshuvah. Even the most extreme ones on the other side, they're all in a situation they haven't been approached yet. And it can be proven from the fact that when people are approached in the right manner, each one according to what he needs, who are not yet religious or think they're not religious, they'll make them religious, without a doubt. This, because today there's so many proofs, absolute proofs for the existence of Hashem, absolute proofs for the high level of scientific truth found in the Tanakh, from all angles, absolute proof that all the mitzvot come from Hashem, you can prove it today, but the proofs depend upon what a person is willing to accept the different types of minds available. So you have different kinds of people, different approaches you have to use to different groups of people, different types of people. And if we all do it, there's no question, there's so much siyata dishmai help given today to bring every Jew back to his origins, so we should we to take hold of it. They could use this damnut. But that needs a lot of zirizot. So, this is how Rav Hirsch develops the concept that Chomets represents the national ego, which is constantly mentioned the Chumash, never say that Kochiva Otsimadi, that my strength and the force of my power has produced this success whether it's a success of the nation or success of the individual, whether it's physical, material success or whether it's spiritual, never say that. Because if you say that, you've forgotten Hashem. Don't forget Hashem. He's the one who gives you. He gives you the strength whereby you can produce success. But you've got to know he's the one who gives you the strength. If you're able to be good in business, make success, it's Hashem who gives you the mind for it. You've got to recognize it. And if he gives you a mind to be able to learn Torah, to spread anything of truth in the world, it's he who gives you the strength. And he wants us to recognize it. All the mitzvahs are there, we should recognize Hashem. That's the concept of all the blessings before anything that we do. 
So this is the major lesson, and very important lesson for the nation. If the nation is led by people say, I am the one who has saved the people, or my army has saved the people, forgetting Hashem. So this is the lesson of Chomets, how it's important. It was important when Am Yisrael went out from Egypt, and it's a thousand times more important today. This is the lesson. That's how Rafish develops it. But it's already mentioned here. Yeah, it's well, all the all this forum, all the Midrash mentioned. So I'm going to show you, and that's my view in any case, I don't, and people don't always like to hear this, but his inspiration came from his few years in that yeshiva of the orphan there. Yeah, he admits it also, he was my teacher. And then after he's an alternate. So, because, but oh, he developed it, Ravish developed it. The, by the Orchner, you find it in his analysis of the page in front of you. So the page, I'm going to paraphrase it. The page in front of you deals with the question of the mitzvah of Bittul and Bio. Leif Chadash al de Bittul and Bio. So how to produce a new heart through the mitzvah of nullification of the Chomets and destroying it. So he says, even if a Baal Teshuva has taken from himself, Hirchik Mikipa, perhaps I'll just say it in English for lack of time, he's, he's taken away from himself, being ruled by evil material desires and all types of sinfulness. He becomes a vessel that is prepared and purified from absorbing forbidden characteristics as the Azov Shasha Darko, which Avan Maksubotab. That a person who is wicked, Hashem says, forsake your wicked path, and the path means the character. And a man of iniquity who perhaps doesn't do evil, but his mind is filled with evil thoughts. Then he can empty out his heart from these evils. Then he, but he shouldn't leave it like that. Then it's to sanctify. It's to sanctify his heart to serve Hashem. And there are two other things required for him to reach perfection. First, he's got to transform his evil actions by good actions. That will outweigh, at least, weigh as much as the evil action did before. How does he do it? One is by being, to some extent, in self-intrusing, self-discipline, in limiting his uh, materialistic inclinations, and the other way is to pursue the mitzvot. Then a further aspect is he has to perform in his own character, chatati nefti that my sin is constantly in front of me. He should remember and be ashamed of his previous actions. And when he becomes strong, he should seek from the Holy One, blessed be he, should give him a new heart. Leib Chadash, Ruach Chadasha. A person should have a new heart, a new spirit, to become strong in the awe and the love in front of Hashem, that he shouldn't fall back into folly. But how can he do it? So there's a hint in, in searching for the Chametz and destroying it. So, so now, to demonstrate this, there's a Gemara in Pesachim, and here, here the old Pernel does the following. He takes a piece of Gemara which deals with halachic aspects of Hapodek Tzarek Havata. The person who searches for the Chomets also has to nullify. You know that on the night of the 14th of Nisan, we all search for the Chomets, Got to search in every area, and then after, well, after the end of the search, we nullify any homies that we didn't find. 
and other. And then <coughs> next day, <coughs> we burn up all the hormones that we did find, <coughs> and we make a further nullification <coughs> of any hormones <coughs> that we did not able to burn up. <coughs> So he says here, what is the power of having a new heart that we call that Teshuvah? And the sage already taught us the main aspect of Teshuvah, how do you know if done real Teshuvah? If you come to the same situation of temptation, where you gave in to the temptation, in the same manner, Say to say, he sinned with a woman in a certain place, and then the Rambam puts it, it's it, the Gemara puts it that way as well. He's got the same energy he's had before, the same materialistic impulses he's had before, but he controls them. And that's what Kohelet says. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, number one, it says, Remember your Creator in the day when when you're young. Why? Because of, why is the Bachua given the name Bachua, which comes from the root to choose? Because the power of choice <coughs> that a person possesses depends also on the power of his Yetzirah. The Yetzirah, that means the materialistic individual desires grow in a person in adolescence more than any other period in his life. Because that's when a person has to make a choice. Is he going to follow the method of giving in, his strong instincts? Person, person when he's not yet a mitzvah, generally speaking, he has also materialistic and sexual desires, but they are weak. And he feels to some extent in control of his parents and his teachers. But then, in adolescence, called the Na'ar, Na means he wakes up, he wakes up to his whole character. And he recognizes that he's got extreme materialistic ambitions, sometimes passions, for food, for drink, for enjoyment, for wealth, and for pleasure. The pleasure instinct is stronger. So he has to decide, am I going to use this pleasure instinct just to satisfy myself? Or these instincts for, for fame, so for money? Or am I going to use it to become saintly, to follow the conscience? So the Kohelet speaks about this. And you know the Kohelet does not mention the name Hashem, but the name of Elohim. And the tradition is that Kohelet was for a reflection of some of the droshes he gave on Sukkot where representatives of the other nations came because they brought an offering in the temple this time. And they also came from Greece. And that a lot of the in Kohelet is filled with concepts that you find in early Greek philosophy. And the Greeks also admitted that the source of the wisdom is from Kadmos, from Kedem, from the East. So, uh, in fact, I had a, a scholar here who published a book, Oxford University Press. You know that, uh, <coughs> that, he, that Hebrew is Greek, at that extent, <coughs> based on these concepts. But the truth is, it's the other way around. Greek is Hebrew. Everybody admits it admits today, the alphabet comes from the alphabet. We know that the writing came from there, but also wisdom came from there. As it says in the Quran, it says in the Tanakh, that his wisdom, he was regarded as the Shalom as the wisest man in the whole of the Middle East. It says in, it says in the Book of Kings. Anyway, so he speaks here to mankind. He says, remember your Creator in the day when you were Bahu'a. Why is it called a Bachur? Because his freedom of choice is very important. That's why, that's why the, the essence of education 
that is important to the right manner is the age of adolescence. When people formulate their basic motivations. That's what he says here. They to do it early. It's called the Mayor Avi gives don't go and say I'll wait. First I'll go and satisfy all my instincts. Yeah, and I'll follow. And uh, and then there'll come days, I've got no willpower left. Person becomes very old, his willpower becomes comes to some extent more inactive. He can't his strength is enough for that. So Ika Teshuva Men Urav. The main power of Teshuva therefore is that when a person is in adolescence, when he wakes up, because it means to wake up, his personality wakes up. When he has great, great strength. So it's like this. Why do you call it Bachur? Because then he has most choice. And sometimes say, they call it, we call them Bachur and Bachura. It's applied also to choosing a soul partner, a marriage partner. It's the time when you want to choose. You think to yourself, deep down, but everybody, once he reaches the age of puberty, it's already thinking, what type of partner will I have? The girl thinks of the boy, and the boy thinks of the guy thinks of the girl, vice versa. They're thinking over themselves. What's it going to be like? So there, well, that's the time when you, you can still choose. But after you're married, Really, ideally speaking, you have no choice left. Yeah. When, but that's, it's, this is the external aspect. You don't call it Bachur Bachura anymore. Once they're married, they become Ishva Isha. Why? Because we do hope that each one finds his true Zivuk. Yeah. If you find the true Zivuk, you've got to have an attitude, that's for me. And then you'll be happy. That's Mozo Moitzo. So you know what that means. Of course, you've heard it probably. They used to say, when a person gets married, is it Motsu Isha Motsu To or Moitsa Ni Mami Mobesu So, no, so, but there's a deeper concept here. A person goes into marriage, he's made his choice. If both sides say everything, ultimately we've got to choose and then rely upon Hashem. If your choice is really a choice, a pitoiro, then you should say to yourself, my outlook is, what I've been given, even if sometimes there are such gaps of certain modes of behavior and sometimes ideas, so okay, so it's a challenge in life. But the challenge you've been given. You've, you, the girl or the guy, you've been given this challenge, work it out, up you turn it on, and you can make sure and buy it. Because uh, the two people come together and, and we say, we say it's Mila Shamayim. It comes through Bnei Adam. You can't person say Hashem doesn't make Hashem isn't the Masada Kedushin. Yeah, Hashem gives you the ability to choose one that suits your basic character and your future happiness. Let me just let's finish a bit. So then it says, um, this is therefore an important lesson with regard to be a Let's see what, how it works it together. So there's the, the, the Sasuki and the Gemara. Now here, really, Rav Hirsch and also um, Roch Hamer were very deep. And, uh, there are, I've seen some, uh, uh, both of Hasidic and early, earlier interpretations of halachic passages in the Gemara where they, the whole of the interpretation is an inward one. You know, you learn halachot in the Gemara, so we have a Gemara, all different subjects. You should know there's also a deeper aspect, a pneumous aspect, like there's a shuk of the chumish, the mitzvah. So here, here this, this is a, a brilliant exposition of Pesachim, page 6, and if you, of this passage, which I can't go into now, but if you're interested, you've got the page in front of you. If you want to work with that page and take an art scroll Gomorrah and work it through, you'll get a lot of inspiration. All I can do now is just to begin it. But the Gomorrah starts like this. It's not enough to search the Chomets 
and burn it up. No, you've also got to nullify it in your heart. That's it then. That's why we say kol chamira afterwards, which you have to say in English as well. Or in any chomet that I found, yeah, I'm going to burn. And anything I haven't found, I nullify. And even what I've burned, in case there's bits <coughs> left, I nullify them. What you, what's nullification? What is it? You have to take it out of your mind. You've got to think that it, you've got to imagine it's just like dust of the earth. But is it dust of the earth? If you've left nice cakes here in the fridge or whatever, are they like dust of the earth? In your mind, they've got to be dust of the earth. You've got to say they're nothing, they're things, dust of the earth that I tread on. But you, if you, let's say you've got bottles of whiskey and other things, and you didn't manage to sell them, and you didn't burn them, didn't remove them from your domain. So you've got chomets with you. You've got to regard it as non-existent. Hefka, ownerless, two things. It's got to be ownerless. Some say Bittl is really making it ownerless. It doesn't belong to me anymore. You say in your mind, I may have cream cakes and all types of storage of fantastic biscuits, and uh, got a lot of whiskey and other things, and for me they are ownerless. In your mind they've got to be ownerless. And it, and, and out of the dust of the earth, it's a true shit, it's what is Bittl. Bittl tries to become Hefka, if declaring something ownerless, not yours. As some say Bittl is to make it like the dust of the earth. So you say it like this. It means you've got to nullify the evil inclination when you're given the temptation in that place with that woman. Because that's what the Mordor describes it. You, 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 you sinned with a woman, the Mordor described, and you gave her the temptation. And shortly afterwards, you, 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 you start to become a Baal to Shuma. Yeah? Then you meet, you meet that attractive woman again, yeah? and she's, she's ready, ready to sin. She even tempts you the same as she did the previous time. You've got to say to yourself, this evil creation me is like the dust of the earth. For me, to, to pursue this pleasure, which is not allowed by Hashem, first of all, it doesn't belong to me, I make it Hefka. I am now in a different person. I am now learning Yeshiva, I can't do such things. I'm going to say that impossible to do such things. Not easy, that's it, that's Teshuva. That's the Shuvah Shlemi, it's the same temptation. You say to yourself, I'm going to run away from it, it's nothing to do with me, I'm a different person. Um, and also, you, 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 it's like the, the temptation itself is, to me, that dust you tread on. This immorality is something which goes away from me. You know, by the way, this is, it's not such a simple matter these days. With all the pornography that exists on the mass media, okay, you don't have the temptation maybe to be actually in a place of harlotry, but you, but in your, in your, in your, in your, certain things happen in your body, even stimulate you. So you've got to work on it. So that the person saying, okay, till now I watch these movies. Yeah, today you can see them. I think as they say on the iPhone, you can see them. So today I watch them. Yeah, it was, but. What you have to do? Hefka. Hefka means, I am now a Jew. I want to learn Torah. And this power is disturbing me. And therefore I say to it, no. Temptation is given to man to say no. Even Voltaire said that. Yeah. We say in the morning, The advantage of man over the beast is they can say no. Yosef Hatsadi said, No. Say no to pornography. I'm not touching anything that's got to do with it. And even, even so, it's, it's a gift and instinct of pleasure. So you say, oh no, for me, this is no pleasure. This is, this is just rubbling, rubbling in the dust. That's what it's like, the dust of the earth. So that's that. Hapoitik Tzoro Shevato. You see, it's, it's a, and who said that? It's, that that's the deep of Shat. It's the Pneumir Satoira. It's a whole Sogya of a, of a whole omelet of Gomorrah. So I, I think I, I probably won't have time and ability to continue this year, but you can continue yourself. You've got this page. It's just a small piece of one, less than a page of Gomorrah. Read the art scroll, which I was going to expound upon, and Karen reading it here, and it can be a great teaching. And we should always like him to, to, to remove the evil inclination from our midst.
to burn up all these um, aspects of comets in our lives and to dedicate ourselves to Shmadim and Samitzvahs. Amen. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Yes, I've got to